Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I am doing a full face of products from woman-owned brands. Well, it's almost a full face of woman-owned brands. I'm really, really close, but I'm missing a few product categories. I wanted to find a way to celebrate Women's History Month in March, and this video was the first thing that came to mind. So I wanted to feature some of these brands uh, owned and oftentimes founded by women. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to give a special welcome to anyone who's new to my channel. I absolutely love makeup, but I'm working on keeping a curated collection, so I'm doing a no buy and low buy in 2021. I also started my first project pan to try to use up some of those old products, and I'm switching my whole collection over to cruelty-free brands only. If any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing before you go. And now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I went ahead and did my concealer off camera just because I don't have a concealer from a woman owned brand. And just so you know, everything else I'm using in this video that isn't from a woman owned brand will still be listed down in the description box below. And I'll just make sure to mark the woman owned brands in some like very clear way in the description box so you can tell which ones are actually being highlighted in this video versus just other products that I'm kind of filling in the gaps with. But the first thing up here that sprung to my mind immediately when I was picking out a foundation for this video is the Scent Organics Skin Silk Foundation. And I have the shade 20, but this is a little deep for me in the winter so I was bummed because I thought oh man I can't use that on camera it's like way 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 too dark for me it's even a little bit dark for me in the summer but then I remembered that I still had this tiny little sample size of shade 10 from this product so I'm gonna try to use it today I think the formula will still work the caps on these are really really tight on these samples so it looks like it's still like the right consistency and everything now, I have never actually used shade 10 all over my face, so we'll see how close of a, a shade match this really is, but um, it's a very full coverage foundation, so when it's not the right shade, it's extremely obvious, and it looks like it's going to be a little yellow on me, um, but that's okay. I, I don't mind that so much as I do like the three shades too dark of, of you know, shade 20. And one of the reasons I absolutely love this foundation is because it is so full coverage, but it's a dewy finish. So your skin doesn't look like dry and cakey, even though you have extremely good coverage across your whole face. So I'm blending it out with a sponge just because it is extremely full coverage and I do like it, uh, but when I'm not sure the shade is gonna be exactly perfect, like it looks like it's not today, um, I'd rather sheer it out a little rather than have it kind of too thick on my face. I'm still blending kind of across my whole face to make sure it's all even, but I'm gonna also just take it on my ears and then I'm gonna blend down my neck just a little bit since I do have um, a sweater on today, but I want to try to even this out a little. <laughs> Okay, so don't look too closely at the fact that like the shade is still too deep and a little bit yellow for me because that's not the brand or the product's fault. That's completely my fault for using a sample that I had never actually tried on my face before, but it's much closer than shade 20 would have been, which is way, way darker than this. So I'm happy with the results and I'm glad I can show you all the finish of this foundation because it is absolutely stunning. It's definitely, definitely full coverage and that's really, really nice. It mixes in super well with a primer or a moisturizer if you do wanna sheer it out. So I think it's really versatile in that way. And also because it's so full coverage, the one fluid ounce that it comes with is going to last you forever. What I love about this full coverage product in comparison to a lot of other full coverage products I've tried is that it's so moisturizing on my skin. And because it's more of that dewy finish, it still makes me look alive and glowy and dewy, but it still gives me insane amounts of coverage. So definitely check out Sen if you are in the market for a full coverage and dewy foundation. 
Next up here on the woman-owned brand list is Alma Beauty. This is also a black-owned brand. I did a video recently, I'll link up here on my favorite black-owned brands in my collection. So check that out. This product that I'm using today makes a feature in both of these videos because it is so, so good. This is the Double Take Contour Stick and I have the shade White Pearl. So on this side is a contour shade and on the other is a highlighter. I'm gonna be using a different highlighter today, but I'm going to use this contour because it's unbelievably beautiful. So I'm just putting some on my sponge and then I'm gonna start gently tapping that into my skin where I would normally contour. One of the reasons that I love this product so much is because it's really, really emollient. So it's super easy to get it to like spread across your skin and kind of meld and blend with the products you already have going on and it won't like disturb your foundation or move things around or do anything funky with what's already on your face. Alma Beauty also has incredible shade ranges. So this is such a good, good shade for fair skin tones because it has like just these crazy good undertones that I can't even explain. Like that looks like it's occurring naturally on my face. And that's really hard to find in a lot of products. Now that we have a little bit of sculpting and contouring going on, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my next woman owned product here. This is uh, Salt New York and I love Salt New York. Uh, the brand is owned by a YouTuber named Kiki G. She's also a makeup artist and she has a really, really unique and interesting range of cream cheek colors. So I have two blushes, a highlighter and a bronzer and I'm gonna use the bronzer today. I have the shade light medium and my favorite way to use this is to just again, stick with my sponge and just kind of dip the end of the sponge in there and build that color higher up on my cheeks than I put that contour. So Salt New York has um, this gorgeous case as well. And I actually just did a review of Salt New York. So I'll pop it up in the corner as well if you're curious about the brand as a whole. But I adore their products so much. I just, I feel like this formula is really unmatched in at least my collection and all the cheek products, that, or cream cheek products, excuse me, I should say, um, that I've tried in the past. So I'm extremely impressed with the brand as a whole and the products that I've tried. Super inclusive shade ranges, so check it out because um, Kiki has done a really great job of formulating things in a wide range that a lot of people can enjoy. So now you can see I have that kind of contour line going on underneath and then a little bit more of a bronzy tone going on above it. And then I'm also going to use the shade Spice uh, in the blush formula. Really, the formulas are fairly similar. I do talk through the differences in that video that I was talking about where I review everything, um, but I find the blush and the bronzer ones to be fairly similar. I really hope to see more from Salt New York in the future. I don't really know if she, uh, Kiki has plans to like expand this or if kind of like this was her baby and this is, this is truly it. This is what she really wanted to make were outstanding cream cheek products. But I would love to see other formulas as well, just to see kind of like her perspective as a makeup artist, what else she believes would be like a unique formula in the market. One thing I love about these is that they're really easy to like back out of any mistakes. Like if I apply blush where I decide I don't want it, I can just go back over it with like the same brush or sponge that I used for my concealer or foundation and kind of tap around the edges. And it blends everything so seamlessly that it just looks like it's truly kind of one with your skin. And I love that. And although I also love this highlight, I have some other highlighters that I wanna to use today. So I'm going to powder my face off camera Okay, I have two highlighters that I kind of couldn't decide between, so I'm gonna use a little bit of both today. The first is the Juvia's Place highlighter. This is the Tribe highlighter in volume three. I love this. It's like a perfect, perfect champagne highlight. It can be extremely blinding, but it can also be blended really nicely into your skin for a soft, natural look. And then the other one that I'm not sure goes quite as well with this look today, but I might try to pull it off anyway, is 
this center pillow talk highlighter from Ofra. So it's just the center shade here on the Sweet Dreams signature palette. So Ofra has multiple of these like five pan palettes and this middle one is always their highlighter shade. And I haven't actually ever used this alone as a highlight on my face. I use it on my eyes all the time when I use this palette, but I wanted to try it today as kind of like a topper for the Juvia's Place highlighter. So the Juvia's Place highlighter is gonna go everywhere that I put highlighter, and then I think I'm gonna keep the Ofra one on my cheeks. So Juvia's Place is a woman-owned and a black-owned brand. Look at that highlight. And obviously their products speak for themselves, but just to touch on some of my favorite things from the brand, I love this highlighter so, so much. It's by far the most like blinding and intense highlight in my collection, and it, is just such a seamless, perfect, flawless formula. I also really love Juvia's Place. Um, their eyeshadow formula is outstanding. They really have such a wide range of amazing eyeshadow palettes. Like they have, you know, kind of every eyeshadow palette color story I can imagine really wanting. And they have palettes that are huge and they have palettes that are really small and compact. So I just kind of think they have something for everyone. And if you take a look at their website, you'll see, you know, a good mix of neutrals and colorful. They have wide ranges. So the palettes will suit light and deep skin tones. And I just think they have really, really inclusive products. Juvia's Place also runs sales all the time on their website. So you can get amazing quality products for really, really, really low prices. And the affordability just makes it that much better. Okay, so I don't really need more glow, but I really want to use this highlighter from Ofra. So I'm going to just dip my brush in a little bit. This is also a super blinding highlight uh, formula. And so we'll see how this goes. Just gonna place a little bit over the very top here. Yeah, I don't think you guys are seeing it on camera, but it definitely added like a little bit more rosiness to the look. And I think that's really pretty. I really need to use this one like on its own sometime soon because although I layer it pretty often, I feel like for some reason how pink it is really makes me nervous. So I need to just put it on my face alone once and see how I feel. And I am going to continue using this Ofra palette just for a transition shade for my eyeshadow look today. So I'm gonna be bouncing kind of back and forth between these two lighter peachy shades. And uh, while I do that, I also wanna mention that the brushes I'm using today that have this purplish handle are also from a woman-owned brand called Prados Beauty. I adore these brushes. They have sets of brushes, which is what I bought, and they actually recently launched individual brushes for sale as well. So I'll link them down below along with all the other woman-owned brands because these brushes are incredible. I love these shadows from Ofra. And um, actually, I feel like Ofra is not as well known for their eyeshadow formula as they are for a lot of their other products. So their highlighters are definitely one of their, you know, kind of most well-known products. And then I absolutely love their long-lasting liquid lipstick. So I did a how to do like a red lip that stays last week on my channel. So I'll link it up there if you wanna see some of Ofra's other products in action. But I adore those long-lasting liquid lipstick formulas from Ofra because they really do stay put so, so well, but they are not drying. And I don't know how they do it. I think it's just magic, but they are well worth the $20 in my opinion to, to kind of get a formula that in my opinion is just foolproof. It's foolproof, it's beautiful. I do really like their eyeshadow formula. Um, I will say that uh, this shade in here is supposed to be like a satiny shimmery formula and it really comes off essentially as a matte to me and then because it's so similar to this one in tone these two kind of are like the same color um for me anyways i'm not sure how they would show up on other people with like different skin types or skin tones but uh that's kind of the only downfall of this particular palette that i have and now I'm switching over to another eyeshadow palette just to finish up my eye look today. And this palette is from Aether Beauty. And this is the Ametrine Mini Crystal palette. So I'm gonna just kind of dip back and forth between these two shades here and that's, that's it today. So uh, while I do that, I'll tell you a little bit about the brand. So Aether Beauty is of course a woman-owned brand and 
it's run truly by like one individual person, which is mind blowing to me, but that's how a lot of smaller indie brands are. They're actually just kind of like owned and operated by the one individual owner. And I'm really impressed with Aether Beauty's commitment to a lot of different ethical standards. So they source all their ingredients from places that don't have um, any child labor conflicts. When you check out on Aether Beauty's website, you can choose to um, pay just like a tiny, tiny fee to offset the carbon emissions from shipping your product, which I appreciate a lot. Their packaging is built in a way that is fully recyclable. So like when I'm done with this palette, if I take off this elastic and just like pop out the metal pieces of these pans, the metal can get recycled in one way and then the rest of this is all cardboard. So it can all get recycled as well. So Aether is a little bit of a pricier brand, but I think you're paying for the commitment to those ethical standards. So I, I appreciate it a lot and I'm also blown away by their quality. This is the first product that I own from them and I am floored every time I use this palette because every time I use it, I feel like it gets better and better and better. Okay, I'm really liking the warm peachy from the Ofra and kind of the mauve tones from the Aether palette. So this is turning out to be a really fun look. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that mauve under my eyes, just a little ways. I'm gonna try to keep things nice and soft today. And then I'm just gonna stamp a little bit of that mauve on like my outer corners. I don't really wanna like deepen things too much, but I want kind of a base for the eyeshadows that are going down next. So into rose gold, this shade down here, and that's just gonna go all over my whole lid. By far one of my favorite shadows in my whole makeup collection. It is just, it's a formula that is stunning and shimmery and gorgeous, but then somehow manages to not like emphasize texture or, you know, get weird as my makeup wears throughout the day. And then just to round out this eye look, I'm going to go into the highlighter again from the Ofra palette and pop that on another Prados Beauty brush, and I'll put that on my inner corner. And this is how I normally use this highlight. I think because it's in this palette, I just forget to use it as an actual like face highlighter, but it is also just a stunning inner corner highlight. I'm going to do mascara, brows, Maybe some eyeliner and my lip liner off camera because I don't have a woman owned brand in any of those categories. Alrighty, I am back with all of those steps done. And again, everything's listed in the description box below if you wanna know what any of these products are. But moving right along to our next woman owned brand, this is Mented Cosmetics, another one that made a feature in my black owned brands video as well. And this is their semi matte lipstick formula in the shade Pretty in Pink. And it's a really gorgeous shade that's just kind of like a my lips but peachier shade. I have pretty cool toned lips naturally and so I appreciate when I have like a peachy lipstick that still looks at home on my face and that's something I have a really hard time finding actually. A lot of times they lean like too too peach for me to be able to enjoy them but this one is like the perfect middle ground for me. Minted also has incredible reviews on all of their other products. They have eyeshadow, they have complexion products, their bronzer gets a lot of good feedback. So definitely check them out. I only have this lipstick from them, but so far I love it. And it's actually the perfect formula for lips and cheeks. So I love a product that can pull double duty as well. And then last up here, even though this lip is already pretty, uh, you know, like shiny looking because of the formula of that minted lipstick, I did want to add a gloss just in order to feature one more brand. So this is the Milky Lip Jelly from Tower 28. I have the shade Cashew, which is a really gorgeous warm tone brown. And I think it's gonna look really, really nice with this overall makeup look. And I also just wanted to feature Tower 28. So I'll put the lip gloss on and then I'll chat about the brand a little bit. Okay, so first off, look at how shiny that is. It's insane. And you probably saw it did actually cover up the minted shade a decent amount because it is a fairly opaque 
product. So I kind of wish my look was a little peachier now, but that's okay for the final effect. Um, this is what I'm going with just because this gloss has been really genuinely life-changing for me. And I know that sounds probably ridiculous, but it's just such a drastically different formula than anything else that I own. It's almost like a lip oil in that it's like very thin, but it still feels moisturizing and rich on your lips. And I just really, really love this product. I'm so, so glad I bought this lip gloss when it was first launched and kind of just took a chance on this brand that I had never tried before because I am now intrigued by most of the rest of the things that Tower 28 sells. So their brand is very like minimalist aesthetics. Their packaging is all kind of like this clear with the like white uh, font and designs on it. And it's, for some reason, it's just so satisfying to me. Every time I use this lip gloss, I just feel very like chic, uh, but I know that it's also a fairly affordable brand. And that's something that I don't normally care that much about. Um, like I don't really care about packaging all that often, but for some reason, this Tower 28 packaging just really, really speaks to me. <laughs> okay, so this is the final look with products from almost exclusively woman-owned brands. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Please let me know down in the comments below what woman-owned brands are your favorites and what products I should check out from those brands. If you enjoyed this video today, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel before you go today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.